Hey guys, so we've got Battleship Foxy Lady. I still haven't taken the mask and tape off yet. I'll take it off in a minute. I will tune back in when the tape's off, see what the lines are like. Even though it's only primer. Up here's come out all right. Plenty good enough for, compared to what it was. Too shabby at all. And I'll leave that to do its drying thing so I'll get the primer uh, masking tape off in a minute. What I'm going to do next here is get the red on because this I've done this a good few hours ago so it's nice and dry. So I'll get the hard red paint on the bottom of here ready to do the black and also I need to get up here in primer. So that's exactly the same colour as the boat itself. And I'm pretty sure epoxy primers fade and, and go off in the sun over time. So I need to make sure that's covered properly in the, in the polyurethane stuff. So red paint, when that's gone off, masking tape down and get top half um, primed up. Yeah, not too bad at all. Hey guys, follow my journey as I drag my beautiful old cat kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Uh, a lot of the jobs I'm doing, completely first time, I'm a complete novice, learning as I go, and hopefully some of you guys can learn from some of my mistakes. Some of it's worked really well, and some of it is absolute sheer craziness, but somehow I've still managed to put it off. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to uh, follow my progress. Hey guys, this is my little GM10 on Snow Goose. I've just pulled the injector and just turned it round so it's now spraying into the uh, milk carton here. So I think it's squirting rather than atomizing, but I might be being a bit harsh on it. I'm going to try and get an angle where you can see it without uh, me hitting you with a cranking angle handle. If I hold it there. Not sure if you'd call that a squirt or a spray. I'm going to get it checked because if it isn't that then I might have to pull the head apart um, to see why it's being a bugger to start in the morning. Might need to hone the cylinder or something. But it used to start beautifully and now it's just being a bit of a bit of a pig. Obviously simple little engine, nothing's you know nothing's a huge job on an engine like this but I want it to start I don't want to crank it over for eight hours in the morning I'd rather pull the engine apart and have it as it should be so my next job is to take the injector off take it down to a uh, Hove Auto Marine place get the injector tested make get the seal of approval from then if it needs looking at or if it's fine if it hope I'm hoping they're gonna say that's something wrong with that and get it fixed and she fires up if it isn't that then the head's coming off all the joys but i'll speak to you in a bit hey guys i've had to come in here i'm a little bit uh more clean shaven now i've had to I've, the girls in there watching some korean zombies killing each other things so i've come in here and film this so i'm starting to do my cable management for my mast so what I want to do is unstep the mast, step the mast without taking roof panels down and all that good stuff. Um, so it's just a normal IP55 or IP whatever it is, outdoor connector block. 
from B and Q or Wix is like six seven quid. The grommets from Screwfix, um, four of them. There's three there, but four of them cost me. I think it's four quid, and these were a couple of quid a piece. So these ones clamp down small enough that the the wind vane seven pin lead, sorry five pin lead, and the VHF aerial will go into into each of them, and then you'd have the radar, the navigation lights, and anchor lights, and the steaming light. So that should all go in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some. Big roll, I've got a big roll of uh, black bitumen tape, roll that on there, nice and nice and large. Position it on the roof, which I'll show you in a minute when I get up on the roof. Place that down, drill a few pilot holes, screw it in, cut the excess bitumen, cut the excess bitumen off, um, and then start looking at making holes through into the uh, into the cabin itself to run do my, and then start doing the cable management. Should be a lot neater than how it was before. It's a bit of a pain having a grey box sat on the roof, but you know, it's right next to the mast. It's quite, it's quite, um, yeah, it's just a lot better than having wires everywhere and wires running up and down the boat and going left, right, and centre. Just a bit better cable management. So I'm just going to get a jump on, sort my tools out, put some bitumen on the back of here, um, and I shall see you out there. Okay, so this is the site I'm going to mount it. I just chiselled off all the, the horrendous layers of paint that one in. That's going to be a future problem getting off this coach roof. Just so I can mount this onto something nice and clean. So I'm going to stick it in and around there. And that will allow me to run the, um, the radar, the navigation anchor which is around there and then the two the five pin wind vane into this one and the VHF into that one and then once it's all fixed down drill some holes down through the coach roof so this will all be nice and tight um, and then seal it up and then as and when I need to unstick the mast take the cover off get to the connector blocks unscrew it all so I'm just going to buzz out the no, I'm going to sit it down now and then buzz out the pilots. Just making sure it's all in line with the back mounting bolts because I know that's the right place on the, on the roof. Pilot holes for the first layer of glass. Okay, so I'm just gonna tighten this down, which then splooges all the uh, beautiful tape and drill the little crevice it needs to get into. Basically, stopping water getting in any little crevice it wants to. seal all the way around <coughs> yeah yep I can do that plenty good enough hey guys I'm absolutely freezing my bum off 
Um, I've just established getting up and down, up and down, up and down, trying different wires on my rather small battery there. And I've established what wires do what. So there's two three core wires. One does nav lights, one does the, uh, the steaming light. Now, obviously, 12 volt DC system only leads two wires. So I've tried it, I've tried connecting it to live, the negative, everything. The third wire has zero input effect on the nav lights. So on the steaming lights, again, three core wire. And I assumed it's something to do with the deck light. I don't know if the bulb's gone or not. So this one I'm going to blank off. I just want the two core through. The steaming light, I'm going to give benefit to the doubt and run all, all three through the boat. Uh, and then when I manage to get up there, I'll get the mast down, see if the bulb has gone and that steaming light of the, the, on the deck light. Or if there's a problem up there, because it'd be nice to get that working. Um, but yeah, so all I'm doing now this one didn't have much length on it at all anyway so I've just wound that in there done the olive up so that's gonna have a connector block on it ready to go down down below I've got to trim the uh, the steaming light down now do the same thing I'll split it splice uh, that's right, I'm gonna use all three in this one run it through and label it up what's what then the radar wire a run through here with the third one and then the two little small you know, sort of five pin windex one and the vhf run through run through these so i'm going to get on with that because there's not much to film to be honest here it's me cutting wires and putting it through once i've cut them all through and all sourced through i tune back in and i'll go find some chocolate blocks to put them in right i'm absolutely freezing so i've just terminated all these inside here the covers on loose, the only thing a decent screwdriver and lift this down and I shall resume this uh, tomorrow or next time I get a chance to get up here and start drilling the holes and chasing it down through the ceiling of the boat and then getting the ceiling insulated and covered and all that good stuff. But that's it for now. Although it's not as neat and tidy as them little thick little through hole type things that sit on the mast but I like it. And I think it's going to be a hell of a lot easier when it comes to me to unset the mast, which is going to be coming soon for the rigging to get done. So I'm going to just pop that cover up under a few screws, and you know, four bolts and the mast is away, rather than cutting it or taking half the boat apart. Well, I'm tidy up now and go and warm up. I'll speak to you in a bit. Hey guys, so today is not a day for getting on a roof and cutting holes in it. Um, but 30 knots lovely at the minute. Girls, the girls slept right last night, but I was a bit worried that they weren't going to sleep. Um, it was absolutely howling. I was up at, I was up on the roof at about two in the morning in the pants, trying to sort out the halyards. You can hear them now, but there's nothing that's going to sort that out. Not in, not in these winds. So I had to suck it up. Um, you can't really see it out there, but it is horrendous. Um, so what have we been up to? I've mainly been just been planning and thinking about sort of the next steps. Um, and I'm thinking now what I'm going to do, just I'm going to do something inside the boat because I'm just going to stir crazy, is I'm going to paint this sort of, it's not a bulkhead, it's uh, you know the sort of mast support, the main, the main, you know that is like the key wall. Um, I think I'm getting that sanded down and starting to get into getting to work on that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think where I, was, where I was going with that. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that sanded, get that painted. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, and then I've got the old curtains that are on the boat that have been sat in a bag, hidden down in that locker for ages. Because there's no curtain here. And when, especially when the girls are on board and we're all sort of sat up here, chilling out, people down in the car park are looking up at what we're, what we're doing. So I've, put, I've got this old curtain, I screwed my new, my new curtain rail just to this temporarily until I knock all this out and redo it all. Um, but that's up there now for just for a bit of, bit of privacy. And I've also established, bringing a torch for this. Here's this one. 
the well I thought I mean that one probably does leak when it's open the, the vent but it's actually the window see the amount of water down there and it's all leaking out of that window you can see it then you can see it drip there's a fair bit of H2O coming through there so it just goes to show you even more why well look get these blooming windows done they all leak like leaky things so that's slowly going to be making its way down and that will fill the shower tray up and then eventually make its way back into here because of that crack in the shower tray so everything all knocks on to the boat getting full of water and also what's knocked up out of another old duvet cover just a curtain for the girls tucked out of the way so they've got a little privacy screen for when they're doing girl things um yeah that's it really i've got a little the old little bit, bit of carpet here just when the girls are here so they can walk around their bare feet without getting I don't know, walk around the scabby old bits of wood so yeah that's what i've been up to while i'm stuck inside the boat going stir crazy so i want to get on, get on with now is i'm clearing all this out of the way seeing that i've got i've got holes on old, old light hole up there and it's going to lead to fit, um epoxy in. but i'm going to sand it all down see what needs epoxy and get it get thick and epoxy in there tonight uh ready for first thing tomorrow morning to slap first coat of a uh, single pack epoxy i'm not going to do it today so i'm going to be sleeping there and i probably won't wake up with with paint fumes but i'm gonna tidy this area up and uh i'll see you in a little while hey guys so i spent the last half an hour an hour sanding and prepping and doing stuff ready to go for the morning so in here is all sanded out where well i've done the thickened epoxy to cover the screw heads it's all flatted down the little joins and bits and pieces i'm actually up i'm on the side of whether i'm going to paint this this surface tomorrow or not if i do i'll take this this back plate off but i may well do the chair when i do this um i probably should do this tomorrow i may well if the, if the river's really bad i'll i'll clean this area down give a quick prep and i'll do this this frontage as well <coughs> we'll see what we like tomorrow if i can get one outside on it but all the walls are flatted down uh i've just scored them all up take all the shiny itch, shiny faces off there's a few little shiny bits of pieces i might re-attack that tomorrow uh and i've just masked up the the build plate there gone around the windows a bit of masking um masked around the top of the chairs so what i'll do is tomorrow i'll get my poly polythene sheet sort of tape that onto there just to protect these these um backings i've screwed down my little shelf i've made up the top here for keeping me cups of tea and stuff on uh so what i'm going to do now is this bit of thickened epoxy smooth over the screw holes any joins any bits and pieces just get it all filled in get it and then so i can sand it in the morning and get painting and like i say depending on if it's dry or wet i'll get on with painting this as well um but i've got more stuff to prepare on this which i may well look at in a moment thinking about it if i do i'll see you in a second if i don't i'll see you in the morning cheers guys morning guys so i've set up the boat like a murder scene got on my uh my plastic taped up over my cushions all the windows are taped up. everything's taped up the epoxy i've done last night is all sanded down so I'm now going to going to, uh, to mask up and get my first coat of a uh, one pack epoxy primer on. I'm not going to film painting because, well, it's painting. I'm sure there's plenty of videos where you can watch people do painting. Uh, and I'll tune in once the coat's on and we'll see how she looks. Hey guys, that's the first sort of patchy coat on. It's the coat that I really don't like doing because you just don't get the coverage especially over color like brown but i'll give it a few hours um and i'll come back in put a second coat on i've not seen any real imperfections that are bothering me to that it's going to need sort of fairing or filling so I'll, I'll crack on with a second coat in a little while uh and then probably maybe tonight if not it'll be tomorrow morning I'll get the 2k polyurethane on. 
I'm waiting for a phone call as to when I'm starting work and my work placement. So I could be gone this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, two weeks time, who knows. I was waiting for them to let me know when, when they want me to start. Obviously it's a very busy time of year for plumbers. Um, everyone's heating packs up, it's freezing cold, it's, um, yeah, everyone's rushed off their feet. To make time for a trainee, sort of follow someone round and ask stupid questions. Yeah, so I'm just waiting. Isn't a bad thing, uh, I'm still getting paid by the army. Uh, if you can call it pay, and I'm getting time to work on the boat, getting make things like this happen. It's a real, it's an unforecasted nice day today, so it's supposed to be a really nasty week. The rest of the week is supposed to be really nasty, but today sun shining, it's dry, it's about six seven degrees. Um, my two my polyurethane top coat for the upper half of the holes aren't here yet that's what I'd like to get done I'd really like to get that painted so I could get the rub rails on and that would be a big sort of stress gone so to utilize the day I've just been outside I've just gone around with a rag and mopped all the bottom I think I'm going to give it another half hour so that the sun work its business at cooking the top side to make sure there's no moisture it doesn't seem to be any massive pools on top of the boat but I'm going to give it another half hour or so with the wind and the sun. And I'm going to go out, give it another quick wipe over any of the drains that have dripped down. Mask her up and uh, start getting the black on the on the bottom. Which is something I wanted to do close closer to Cranin. But I'm going to double check the times. I'm pretty sure this sea jet stuff is good for months out of the water. But I'm just going to double check. Um, if it's all good, I'll tune in a moment when the boat's all... Um, masked up and I get slopping it on. I'll see you in a minute. Hey guys, I'm going to call that a cut there. There's been like 20 odd minutes. Uh, apologies, it's a little bit all over the shop. I've had to cut things out because it didn't make sense because I've, for some reason I lost loads of footage going from GoPro to my computer. There was so many issues. Um, yeah, I've just lost so much footage. I've got no idea how, where or why. So I'm just trying to make it work what I have got. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm at work now, I spent two weeks working on the boat. So this is um, two weeks away. And I've got a fair bit of footage to get through because I literally spent two weeks of working on the boat pretty much every day. So I've got, I've got a lot of footage to get through. So I've got a lot of editing to get to do. Um, Today is now Thursday the, the 3rd hoping to release this video tomorrow on the 4th um that's yeah i've got a lot of, i've got a lot of editing to do but a big thank you to our patreon blue dog oz uh the guys buy me stuff and um and buy me a coffee the wish list is down below for my electrical things and my uh my, my little wish list and yeah yeah <laughs> cheers for watching thanks guys see you later